All right, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our TSO Hospitality Spring 2021 speaker series. For those who don't know me, my name is Anthony Lai. I am the Student Affairs Program Manager here at TSO. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar titled, How to Get Hired in Hospitality. This quick one hour webinar will provide you insights from both a hospitality recruiter and a hospitality hiring manager on how you can land a job in hospitality. We're also gonna go in depth on how to search for that hospitality job that fits you and the tips and tricks that gets your foot in the door rather than being outside of the door. Joining with me today are Gigi Lujan and Jose ramirez Quant, both of whom are from the Soleil Management Talent Acquisition Team, and both bring a wealth of experience in all aspects of hospitality. So before we go ahead and get started, um, uh, Gigi, is, Gigi Lujan is the HR Generalist and Executive Recruiter, and Jose ramirez Quant is the Guest Service Manager at Tahiti Village. Um, Gigi, I'll go ahead and start off with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your background, and how did you get started in hospitality? Yes, of course. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, Brian. I will take your recommendation of the monocle. Um, I do wear glasses sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Uh, working at computer is hard. Paul, um, as Anthony mentioned, uh, my name is Gigi. I'm actually from Peru. Um, I moved here about in 2019. I transferred most of my credits from my school back in Lima to UNLV and graduated in 2012 with a hospitality major. Um, and since then, I started an, ex an internship with Marriott San Diego Marquis and Marina and fell in love with the food and beverage um, department. I was, um, I did it all. I ended up working for Cosmopolitan, the Downtown Project, um, Gold Spike, I ended up working for Seasons Entertainment. And it wasn't until um, 2017 that I took a, a risk and changed my career. I ended up working for a staffing agency. And my first one was being a recruiter. I recruit for big things such as NASCAR, um, Golden Knights, events. Um, for um, other companies such as Marriott and Wokingham and Sodexo and Aramark. So I ended up experiencing the beauty of recruiting and staffing. Um, right after that, I took a second challenge and recruit for a major hospitality firm, sorry, hospital firm. Um, I, and that made me jump into be a regional recruiter, recruiting for California, um, Utah, of course, Nevada, Idaho. And actually I felt more and more in love with recruiting and now being here, I work for Soleil Management. I actually work for ASNY and ASNY and we have a beautiful company that is called Soleil Management where I work with Jose. It's our uh, resort and recruiting um, site. And now I am overseeing a different positions all the way from line associates to executive and all the way from resorts to food and beverage to sales. So all the cycles and I'm extremely excited to be here to be talking to you and you know share some fun times and I'm a recruited dork. So I'm super excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, Gigi. Well, uh, thank how about you, Jose? Yes, thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much for inviting us to the series. And thank you, Gigi, for joining us. And thank each of you for, for being here. Um, my, my, my story is a little bit different than Gigi's. I'm, I'm currently the guest services manager, like you mentioned. I've been with Soleil Management for about nine years. And I started at the front desk, where I originally applied as a bellman. Um, I, did, I took a different path. Um, and I came into the industry without any experience. And I'm excited to share um, my my journey. I look forward to our discussion about the exciting time that's coming up, where our industry is revving up and the demand for the talent is going to be ramping up. Wonderful, yeah, and we'll definitely delve more into that as we progress through the next few slides. So, um, beginning with Gigi, um, a lot of us want to know what is a recruiter and how do you play a role in getting someone a job. Yes, I want to say that recruiters are magical little beings <laughs> that live within the human resources department. Um, 
basically a recruiter is a person who is in charge to fill a job within an organization, right? A to A to B. Um, we are the responsible for reviewing candidates, conducting interviews, negotiation of salaries, um, successfully identifying a match uh, within the job description and the culture fit. Um, for example, in my personal opinion, I feel that we are an executive matchmaker. We want to find the perfect match and balance between what a candidate wants, what they're capable of, and what the company offers. And that can vary. We are responsible to learn about the human behind the resume, behind the paper. And that takes some skills and some time, some soft skills. You know, hospitality to me is one of my favorite industries to recruit for sure. Um, we have to learn about their specific stories, how they acquire those skills, how do they, um, and how they're able to show those skills on, you know, on the organization, how they're gonna grow, what do they want as a professional development. I feel that recruiting is not one size fits all. We have always have to adjust to new trends, new restrictions nowadays. Um, and then we have to relate to information for all candidates to guide them into making the right career choice. Uh, something that I share with many of my recruiter fellows is that we're always looking for talent. If I'm um, sitting in a restaurant and have great customer service, I will hand my card to someone and be like, apply to my company. Or if I experience mm -hmm. uh, somebody that it's really thorough explaining things to you and maybe it's in a different organization, I would ask them like, maybe consider going to hospitality because you have that eat factor. So that's what a recruiter technically does. I think Jose um, as an operator brings a different type of recruiting. Yeah, no, it's like Gigi said it, we, we can't sit there and, and sift through all these resumes. So they really are magical. We tell them what we need, what we're looking to fill. And they find these, uh, they present these qualified candidates that, that, that are motivated to join our organization in line with what our, our values and our vision are for the, for the company and the organization. So um, they really are very magical. Thank you. <laughs> So that moves on to our next question. So as a recruiter, Gigi, how do myself or anybody who wants to get in hospitality, how do we get noticed? Do we just put ourselves on LinkedIn and hope that you guys find us in like a needle in a haystack? Or how do, what are some yes. of your tips? Yes, you hope and pray and to baby Jesus, but <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to put a hard work. I've always said that um, finding a job is a job itself. So um, I have uh, two tips that I put together um, that might be able to tailor the, um, the answer a little bit better. Um, like I said, you, I mean, it started with your suggestion, right? Yes, any hospitality professional must have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the shul, must have a tailored LinkedIn page that showcases how pro their professional life and their accomplishments. Um, I usually update my LinkedIn page every other, every other quarter while I'm working and every other week if I'm looking for employment, absolutely. Uh, make sure that you are detailed about your education, certifications, work history. Uh, moreover, I also suggest that you start following uh, hospitality accounts and different employers. You know, here in Vegas, we're really, um, big on hospitality you i suggest to follow everybody so you can be more up to with the trends um there's a lot of recruiters that post um in their career websites they post mostly on linkedin than their own career websites um i'll tell you a little secret and i was uh, saying that to jose earlier um if you send a network connection to a recruiter eight out of ten will accept even if they don't know you uh, we love network. We love to have a platform um, for us to just post a position and maybe somebody will know somebody that will know somebody. So definitely I suggest to get your LinkedIn going, follow those accounts and then expand your network. Start clicking away for like a sweet message saying, you know, like um, I, I'm very interested to make your acquaintance. You know, this is my friend request. Bungo, and the more you get practice, the less shy you're gonna get into um, asking for networks. I um, mean, the last thing I recommend is definitely have a strong virtual presence when it comes to um, 
these um, monsters on virtual hiring, which is indeed tip recruiter, um, you know, career builder, you have to have a, a job seeker profile. Um, a lot of the companies, especially indeed being such a, a big company for that, we recruiters are able to see, um, recruit for actual um, resumes. So you have to have a killer resume, you have to have a killer um, uh, cover letter as well. So I definitely suggest that you build those and then have a mentor or another colleague looking at them to give you some feedback, to give you some pointers, to tell you maybe you should add this, maybe you should delete this. Oh, do you remember when we end up doing this project and add those things? And as much as more information as you add, the better it's gonna look. And that's how uh, recruiters actually see candidates. And everything sounds fantastic, but at the end, if, it, if, if your um, profiles lack of personality, um, or creativity or originality or any industry knowledge, then you might just lose the opportunity. So having a strong virtual presence is what's gonna get you in networking, is gonna get you in the doors for sure. Yes, absolutely. And if you don't have a LinkedIn profile right now, and I'm passing that to our students that are watching us, get started. You know, we do have the necessary tools to help you. We have our professional presence in hospitality course that will get you started in creating a LinkedIn profile. So if you haven't done so already, start doing that because the only way for someone to notice you is not always going to be on the application. It's going to be on what you have presented on your own digital online presence. So um, again, this is for Gigi. Um, now that we have, like some of us have had that online presence, you know, what have you seen as from a recruiter's eye that you should never tell or never show to a recruiter? Or that would be like, oh, well, thank you for showing me this candidate's profile. I'll just go next, you know? Yes, I, um, I partner with Jose for this answer because I think it's important for everybody um, to experience a side of the operator. So um, I feel like, Jose, do you want to take this one? Yes, when you're, when you're in that conversation with the recruiter, you want to keep it positive, right? You want to avoid negativity. You don't want to start talking bad about your previous employer, your previous colleagues, for example, or any experiences that were negative. Keep it positive. Um, something else to keep in mind is to center the conversation on you, right? Um, if you start to, 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 to meander into a negative, uh, something negative or something, um, remember to bring it back to your successes, to your accomplishments, and how you personally had an impact on on that organization. And lastly, don't, don't be untruthful with yourself or with the employer. If there are drawbacks or weak points that arise, be confident and honest and realistic in the conversation uh, to set up a great foundation of trust between yourself and the, uh, the potential new employer. Yes, and I think I wanted Absolutely. to clarify with the, um, with the call is that there is the recruiter, which is the person who is in charge of the job requisition. And then there's the hiring manager. The recruiter can also be the hiring manager at times, but for example, on this on this particular company I'm working for right now, we do have different hiring managers. One of them is definitely Jose, who, who is our um, manager for the front desk. So we have the duality, which is great. Um, so when a candidate shows potential to us, we definitely partner with more than one department to make sure that the candidate has the experience they, they need and, and they get all those uh, questions answers before they say yes or no to our propositions, for sure. That's a really great point, Gigi. That's a really great point because, for example, last summer, I wasn't just hiring people at the front desk here. I was hiring as well candidates at the, at the pool. So the demeanor that they showed me may have been different if they thought they were talking to their hiring manager, even though I was the hiring manager. Um, so always keep that in mind. Um, everybody's a recruiter. Yes. Absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. The only thing I want to add to this is um, if I, I love Googling, I think Google has saved my life in many times. So this is a great question to Google and you should be looking into those articles you know, where how to do a salary um, expectation, how to conduct the negotiation. I think one of the, the things that I couldn't find on Google was this piece of advice is to watch for your verbal cues. Uh, sorry, your verbal non-cues. 
So basically when you are talking to someone, um, there has to be a correlation of what you're saying, uh, what you want and how you say it. So definitely watch for those, um, most of what not to say because most of us hospitality tours are very polite people, we're very charming and enchanting. However, if you don't have the personality showing out to how you talk and how to communicate on, on your body language, that might be uh, a no-no hire for us. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say on this question, Anthony, is the fact that as a recruiter, I don't appreciate when my candidates don't have questions to ask me. The last, you know, the last questions is like, oh, do you have anything to ask me? And they say, no, I'm good, thank you. I feel like you don't want to get to know me <laughs> and I'm going to get to know you. <laughs> so it's not a mutual thing. Um, or that you're not interested in learning about my company and the little mini greedy details that will make you successful in the role that we are applying for, right? So definitely ask questions. One of the, my goals too are always, um, what do you enjoy most about the organization? Uh, what do you like about your team members? Or even uh, where do you see this company growing in the next five years? So definitely those are the, my two tips as a recruiter for this question. Absolutely. You want to have a conversation rather than just a, a question and answer time. You want to respond back and make sure that all, at, all areas are covered. And it also shows that if you're being questioned by a recruiter, it shows that you care about the company and the organization and you are interested in knowing more. If you're not passionate about it, then the recruiter is not passionate about you. Exactly. You gave, you get what you, re uh, mm -hmm. you give, you receive what you give. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And I know some of us have raised their hand and have put in questions on the Q&A feature. Um, just to remind you, we'll, we'll save some, uh, good, some 10 minutes of, your, of the audience time to get those questions answered. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with our next um, area. Now we're going to go into more about hospitality. Now that we know what a recruiter is, what is hospitality and how does that play a role in the hiring process, specifically with, the, with this uh, webinar? So I'll begin with like the first question. So how does someone like us who are new to in the industry, who have never you know, experienced hospitality, get into it if we don't have like the skills or experience? Yeah, no, that's exactly, um, I'm, I'm so excited to answer this. Uh, that's exactly how I came into this, into this industry. <laughs> it's actually in middle school when I decided that I was never going to do um, hospitality. I, I grew up here in Las Vegas, so that was one of the major industries, and I was like, no, I definitely don't want to do that. So I started pursuing a different path. I was set on, um, I had just um, started learning French in middle school, and I, I had a huge passion for it, and I also had a big passion for, for, for learning and teaching. So I married those two in high school, and I was on a track to, to learn language. Um, my first jobs were in retail. Um, I started at 15 um, in, in the mall at the food court, and in the fashion, uh, the, in the retail stores, um, I was not, I was not looking to enter hospitality, right? Um, and then I graduated, and we all, um, we all know what happened in 2008. That's the year that I, I was lucky to graduate. Things um, kind of turned upside down for us. Kind of a similar situation that we're all facing right now um, with with the COVID crisis. But um, I had no knowledge. I had no experience. I had, I had no connections. I um, I was not, I was still not interested in, in that, in that industry. So I, I took a job with a staffing company um, that helped airlines and I lied to myself and I said, oh, it's not tourism, it's transportation that I'm working in. Um, I reset my expectations and I, I realized that I did actually enjoy the tourism industry. Um, I, I, I joined the staffing company and they had me um, do a few different tasks. So it first started off with sanitizing airplanes. So it was really exciting to, to walk onto the airplane just like you were traveling. So that kind of spurred my sense of, of, of excitement for travel. Um, later on, they put me um, into a uh, front desk position at the ticketing area where you would um, just attach the the, uh, the baggage tags to the bags from the automated self kiosk that you still needed a person there to attach the bag and send it over to the right place. Now that that was only one day for me because I made a huge mistake and I was attaching the bags to the wrong 
uh, tags and I was sending bags all over the country. Um, so they moved me right out of there. Um, and the next day I was at the carousels handling the bags um, that had already arrived to the correct destination, right? Um, so that was so exciting for me because I was able to help people start their vacations. Literally, they were I was giving them their bags and they were going off and getting excited to jump in the taxi and go to the hotel. And that's where I realized that I had been so wrong um, in, my, in, my, in my disdain for the hospitality industry. So I started to look for jobs and I realized no, oh my gosh don't have any connections any skills so I found a, um, a hotel that was nearby the airport called Tahiti Village um, they had a bell desk opening and I thought hey I've got some transferable skills I know how to handle baggage I can I can do that so I, I went in to the interview I explained that I explained my skills I explained my foreign language skills and my flexible schedule and in the interview um, I also described most of all that passion that I, that I experienced at the airport and that other job where I was making those connections and providing a warm welcome. And, and the, uh, the manager who was interviewing me, she, 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 I remember she said, oh, you would be a really great fit for the front desk. And that's not something I ever thought somebody would say to me, right, up, up until that point. Um, and it was a great experience. I started um, learning the, the industry. I started learning how to train other people to do that work. And eventually I moved up uh, to be a supervisor of, of, of the front desk agents. And there I was able to, to mold the training objectives, um, you know, added um, steps of accountability there. That led into a, a new role that was created as a senior supervisor where I was able to mentor the supervisors um, and mentor them as leaders. I was, and then that's where I actually started um, partnering with TISO. I started networking with, with other organizations. So I, I did a, a certified guest service professional class, which was a fantastic way to meet a lot of folks who were in the industry. Uh, later the next year, I, uh, I moved on up again to assistant guest services manager, which again was a new position um, that allowed me to, to take more leadership workshops and, 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 and develop those skills. And now I'm here. Um, so it's not, it's not un impossible. And all of you folks that are, that are watching, you guys are already a step ahead. You're developing these skills now. Um, and Gigi has a wonderful saying that she shared with me. Experience is only an opportunity away. And, and it, it really spoke to me because that's, that's, my, that's my own story. I, um, I as a recruiter, adore listening to stories like Jose. Um, it's just so refreshing to see fellow hospitality professionals, you know, achieving those goals when you start from nothing, when you start from just, you know, or coming from a different industry. Um, to me, what I can only add is really to go ahead and look from within. So look from within, try to do a piece of paper and a pen and write down everything, every single skill that you have, every single position that you've ever done, whether it was pay, whether it was unpaid, maybe it was uh, you know, certification, maybe it was an internship, um, and then try to apply that into a hospitality mindset type of job. Um, you know, that is one of the best things to do when you don't know what to do in the hospitality industry. Um, and also like network. I love that, you know, I was able to meet with Anthony many years ago and then we've been kept friends and virtual friends through LinkedIn throughout the years, you know, and, and I will, t I will share a, sec a recruiting secret. I'm full of recruiting secrets today. So when, uh, my next recruiting secret is that 85% um, of the time, recruiters and hiring managers will conduct a courtesy interview when all their colleagues refer them um, refer to them. So if Anthony would have tell me, hey, Gigi, um, this candidate or my friend is looking for a job, and because of how connected I am with Anthony, I'll be like, okay, if I don't think this person might have a strong resume, I will still conduct a courtesy um, interview in surprise maybe my that might be a good hire so it's not about not having the skills not having the experience because you have one or the other it's just how you apply them and in the case of Jose he um, you know he told us his story so he applied those skills that he had with transportation and instead of saying oh I work in the transportation industry he said I was part of uh, the you know surprise and delight of the guests so find those cues and then that will take you to the hospitality, to your hospitality dream, for sure. 
Absolutely. And I think both of you have ex extremely highlighted the transferable skills because in any industry, we can find many skills that can be transferable into hospitality and plays a role in that. If we just take the time to just write everything down that we have done over the past many years of, a, of our own personal work experience. And also we have to be open to anything, you know, when we get into the hospitality organization, regardless of where you're at, you know, you have to be open. As Jose said, he started off as in Bell Desk and then somehow got in his way into front desk and then gives you off to somewhere else and leads you off to somewhere else. Yeah, so if you're an accountant, you have accounting experience, apply for accounting and hospitality. Like as simple as that. Yeah. It's just, you're, you're changing the hat. Um, the most thing mm -hmm. is you have to have customer service, like good, excellent customer service, and then you should be good to go. Wonderful. All right, now this is for um, someone who, uh, for us individuals who haven't worked, let's say, I mean, 10 years is a lot, but who have a certain amount of employment gap and we're filling out that application you know, we're always worried that we might get rejected. Is there anything, any tips that you guys have in mind that can help us fill in that, that gap? Specifically yes. in the COVID area, because I mean, yeah. Yes, I do. And, and this is fairly common. So I don't want anybody to be, um, you know, think, uh, thinking they're singling out. It's quite common that people do have gaps. People have lives. I think um, coming from a different country, in, in other countries, we do go and enjoy vacations a, a year, you know, backpacking and um, we are mothers and fathers and, you know, so it's quite common. So num number one, it's very common. However, it is something that you do have to bring up immediately. It's an elephant in the room and then you have to address it. So um, I will say you have to be upfront and honest. Like, like, like you said, um, you want to make sure that you explain the situation, but don't give too many personal details, you know, but you at the same time, you want to be able to provide core facts and keep it, you know, professional at all times. Um, I will say you can, like, like I mentioned the previous examples, right, studying abroad, or maybe you were completing a certification, or you were being, you know, caring for somebody that was ill. I mean, that happened, and that's life. It's just how you be upfront and honest about it. And then um, the last thing I will say is that you want to make sure that you do tell your recruiter that that's ended. You know, when you're talking, it's like, okay, you know, I was taking care of my ill father, or um. um you know, I was on maternity leave and I'm coming back and this is the plan that I have to not being able to take any more uh, breaks from work. So that to me shows, um, you know, that you've resolved your, your prerogative and then you're ready and, and moving back. Um, and you then bring it back to why are you a successful candidate? Um, why are you a successful, you know, hospital tour? or whatever it is, you bring it back to the professional, to the skill, to the qualifications, questions and answers. Um, a tip that I've seen, and uh, again, this has worked for many of my candidates, is the fact that they tell me, oh, I already explained this to other companies, which makes me think they are an in-demand job candidate and job seeker. So if you just tell me, if you brought my, my ideas, so like, okay, so he's already talking to other people, that might be okay for me to bring it on. So definitely um, sell yourself hot. You already have you know, this disadvantage, which is, it can be a disadvantage at times. Um, I don't wanna sound negative, but it can be a disadvantage. So you have to sell yourself a little bit more higher and be mindful of how you're going to say it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think in any recruiter or hiring manager's mind that well, how do you explain in those 10 years? Are you actually doing something? What are right. you doing? We don't want you to say, well, I just didn't do anything. I just sat around. Um, it doesn't warn the hearts of or get the attention of, of, the, of the interviewer. If you're doing taking care of your family or you're going for school, they want to see that you're being productive and getting to that, that job in that position that you're applying for. Absolutely. You have to find yeah. ways to make it up. Now, yeah. mm -hmm. 
Now, now, now we're going on the opposite end. Let's say we have you're looking for someone that is applying for the position but has way too many jobs, and you know the longest they ever held was probably about six months. You know, pretty short. You know, would that to your guys' mind is that considered an issue? Is that a common hospitality trait uh, amongst us applicants? You know, what what's your opinion on that? So I'm gonna get a little bit more technical, and then I'll have Jose uh, feeling the feelings. <laughs> but to me, those are job hoppers. Um, if you Google it, job hoppers, if you're one of them, that's you. That was me as a millennial. <laughs> I, you know, uh, usually I've lasted my jobs one to two years and then I'm moving to the next. Um, so definitely it is, if it's six months, it is hard for us to, to be able to evaluate consistency, evaluate results. Um, so it might be a little bit harder if you're six months. So I want you to make sure that if you get into the six months gap um, on employment and you're not happy with your employer, my suggestion is talk to your managers, talk to your leaderships, have, uh, have time to have those conversations and be like, listen, I'm not happy. Uh, my skills are not matching. This is not what, you, what, what it was promised to me. And then try to see if they will promote you to something else, change your job description, or even transfer you within companies and organizations. Um, I used to work for Cosmopolitan where we used to have a lot of transfers from one department to another. And that kept you within the same organization, even though it was different roles. So that's something to definitely to consider. Um, I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves is do not accept a job that is not going to make you happy at the end because the only thing you're doing is you're going to end up quitting you're going to end up not being happy and then you're going to end up being a job hopper and that can actually damage your career more than it will uh you know put you in advantage um and my last recurring tip for this question is if you have a job that is less than six months don't list it sometimes on your resume because or or in a job search on you know on your LinkedIn or in your any of those pages unless you're gonna treat it as a project, right? We are I'm hearing among you know my fellow hospitality tours, my fellow um, executive hospitality tours. So those things you edit. Sometimes less is more. So if you don't bring it up because of X, Y, and Z, um, you know, I know there's this thing about the applications, uh, you know, fill your application, um, the last 10 years of, of, of job seekers. Th that's the yes, because we do want to see a history and that's definitely has to do with the human resources side when you want to document everything. However, when you want to really pursue a job, be very careful and tailor what you're going to do. So you can list it on an application, but if you put it on your resume, it might look, you know, a little bit funky. Yeah, that's exactly what I what I would echo is if I'm looking at the document and in interview and the first time I find out either about the 10 year gap or the or that your longest job was six months, then it's not going to be a good look right bring it up be ready to talk about it if you have a job that you were only at for a short period a temporary job or something, um, get a, a recommendation letter uh, from from the previous employer that you can present be prepared to talk about it. Be prepared. <laughs> of course. All right, now we're going to look into a different uh, side of the hiring process. So any advice for us seasoned professionals who are looking for a hospitality job, but over a certain age, and we know that, you know, some of the positions in hospitality are looking for that fresh talent, but what about the ones that have the talent and have the life skills? You know, what advice do we have for, for our applicants that are over a, a certain age? Um, I mean, one of my favorite things of being a recruiter for hospitality is that diversity. So it, it, I feel that it doesn't matter how old you are, your current career status, um, you know, anything that might put you into a box, it just, it, it, for hospitality, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters to be as successful at hospitality is to have that passion and the excellent customer service that you you know that you have to develop and that you have to live with every single day and you have to breathe and you have to teach so basically to me saying um 
jobs over 40, you know, over 30, over 50, over 60, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really resonate with me. I feel like everybody should be treated the same. And, you know, you're going to find that within hospitality, which is very, un it's a very unique um, industry, maybe in construction, you know, maybe on skill trades, you know, being over 40, it, it, it has a lot of limitations with hospitality. It's, it's not there. Is there non-existent? They're just in your head. So don't ever think about those things. Um, I think one of the um, best advice I've ever had for any job seeker, um, but ba basically for mature or seasoned job seekers is to be able to say that you have become a lifelong learner. You know, um, be able, I recommend for example, for you to take classes to update your skills. Um, sometimes uh, younger people do, you know, go by fast. So they have those trains, they, you know, they, they wake up and, and everything is digital. For, um, you know, for mature job seekers, definitely you have to be on that same trend, right? So I ask you to listen, for example, to relevant TED Talks. Um, so you can be part of the conversation, attend some industry conferences and network with current, uh, with current leaders. And that it's for anybody. Um, but for seasoned um, job seekers, definitely, you know, have the technology, be familiar with technology is going to help you a lot because right now you're going to do a job place and everything is digital. An application is over the phone, um, sorry, an application is over the internet and a phone screening, you know, in a Zoom call. So definitely you want to show that you are relevant and that you have what it takes to take you know, down any challenges, regardless of your age. Yes, yes, definitely. And like you just said, uh, if you know, if, if you're if you find yourself in this situation, you are not alone seeking a new a new path in your career. And 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 hospitality is really an industry where you can develop the skills um, in, in the same way you can develop an art skill. Um, it's 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 open to a lot of. Um, um, a lot of folks with a lot of backgrounds can be very successful. Um, here at Tolay Management, um, that is that, that that type of diversity is very important to us. We love to paint with every color of the rainbow, not only because it's the right thing to do, but we find that the distinguished family of diversity is really, really um, has worked really, really well for us here. Um, for example, during the seasonal peak last year here. Uh, during strange circumstances, we had a couple of folks, uh, Michael and Debbie. Um, they were so excellent. They contributed so much to the to the culture of the department. They excelled in their specific roles. They they caught on to, to all the all the, the specifics of the role. They may have required, you know, maybe some attention on some technical aspects of, of software that they have not worked on before, but that goes for everybody who, because, um, you know, some people come in and they don't know the software, right? So it's not, it wasn't unique to them because of their age. Um, and they also had another factor, their schedules were flexible um, and they, that permitted them to take the time to acquire those skills and gain that experience on the job and, and training in the field um, that was new to them. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Now I know we uh, covered this just a little bit in the first slot in the first half of the slide, but you know, for someone that is new or looking for a career change, um, what job can I start off in hospitality? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of avenues, and kind of like how it happened to me, I had to be realistic and reset expectations. I wasn't gonna. Um, I was. I wasn't. I wasn't considering myself for the front desk. I considered myself for the bell desk. But there's a lot of. Of, of, of positions where you can transfer those skills over, uh, transfer that unique talent that only you bring. Uh, some of those would be the, you know, the reservations call center. And that's a great way to get a start in a company um, in maintenance if you have any of those skills. Events and marketing or, or at the front desk, you know, don't, don't discount those just because you don't have those specific skills or experience. Yeah, and, and those are great examples. Um, I believe that this is a, a, a one, one, one personal um, answer. I will, like I said, scan the abilities, the skills, the competencies that you have put on a piece of paper and then match them. Like if you know when you do A, B, C, D and then you're matching um, on the different hospitality divisions, right? 
Do you want to be front of the house or back of the house with food and beverage? Do you want to apply for events and venues? Do you like, you know, weddings? Do you want to be a wedding planner? Do you want to be um, part of the aviation, right? Um, and, or maybe hotels. Like I, I, I never was good at be a front desk agent. I, I would have hate to be standing in front of the guests and just have a line repeating line. I mean, but I was a cashier of food and beverage, but I loved it because I was half a bartender. So definitely what's, even though you're starting off, you always want to enjoy what you're starting off. So assess what you want to do, do the structure um, and take time to look for those job openings, you know, and be brave be flexible to start from zero to start from scratch because if you're a star you're going to rise to, to the top you know like the cream always rises to the top so if you have to start from an entry level position like everybody has ever done it do it do it even if you have to take an internship that is not paid even if you have to you know take an internship that is somewhere else like my internship when i was in unlv was in utah i celebrated my 21st birthday in utah Ogden, not even Salt Lake, Ogden. You know, <laughs> if anybody's here from Utah, love the state. But it was, you know, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't at the MGM, it wasn't the Caesars, it, and, and I was in UNLV, and it was for Sodexo, for a like university. It, it was just so bizarre. But I did it and I loved it. I fell in love with food and beverage then and there. So put yourself out there and be brave. Yeah. Absolutely. Put yourself out there. But, you know, when you do start off that entry level, you know, you have to look into if this is a gateway to a position that you want to get into. If it's not, then probably don't want to start off on that area. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about that dreaded job application, writing it out, going on to our career website and, and see what we can do to, you know, beat the system and making sure that we get ahead of the pile above anybody else. So a um, question to both of you, what are some of the most common mistakes that applicants make when filling out that job application? Yeah, a, for, a great one that, that Gigi uh, mentioned, I wanna highlight again is um, adding in that job experience if it's not relevant to the position. And make, remember to be specific uh, when you're um, preparing this document. It is gonna represent you and speak for you in the room when you're not there. It's your only chance of being perfect, right? As close as perfect as you're gonna be. Um, it should be free of errors. Um, the typical ones I see are, you know, misspellings. Um, and that attention to detail is gonna is gonna really speak volumes. Yeah, I think um I think I mean I know you part of your classes covers something like this. Um, Anthony, so what I'm going to actually tell you, um, you know, now, now that we're friends, I'm sharing secrets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is this um, applicant tracking system that we recruiters use, okay? Um, we are able to create and set um, certain filters and job postings that we can match candidates resumes to the core and buzzwords for our job um, descriptions. So when I say buzzwords, for example, if it's communication skills, if we're looking for somebody in learning and development, if it's, uh, uh, you know, profit and loss, you know, PNL analysis for our owner services, or if it's safety compliance for security, Right, so those things, make sure that you have those buzzwords somewhere in your resume, whether it's on the front or the top and the bottom. If you wanna do a list of skills, just have them and Google them, research them, do your job, because those are the things that are also gonna be on the resume, they're gonna be on the applications. Um, I, my second tip on this one, because I, I wrote it down here, um, is I love this website called iHire.com. Now, I don't work for them, so, uh, but I really like them. Um, I think they are an underdog and they have um, this, they, they are able, you're able to save your bazillion resumes into one and then they're able to match your resume with the job description by just doing clicks away. So it's a really, really cool um, tool that it's out there that I just joined a webinar last week and I was fascinated by. 
Um, so it's ihire.com and they have like I hire hospitality, I hire culinary, I, I hire every single industry that you might think of. It's beautiful to do. Also, I suggest that you do your skills in LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has a skill section and I, and I suggest, and I think you can add up to 20, 30 skills, I think it is. Um, don't kill me if I'm wrong, but it, it will show you as a recruiter or even as a candidate when you're a match to a LinkedIn job. It will say like, oh, your profile matches this. And it has like all this like check, 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 checks. Those are because you have to add those skills on your LinkedIn. So um, definitely that and make sure that your LinkedIn is um, you're interested in looking for more opportunities. So those are my those are my tips. Yeah. And so it's ihire.com, right? I H I R E. Yeah, and I'll and I'll send you the I'll send you the webinar for I'll I'll add yeah. you the webinar. It's it's beautiful. I love it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I guess um, another tip would be, you know, when you're looking for the, those buzzwords, you know, pay very close attention to the job description. The job description says profit and loss and every, you know, every single uh, paragraph or every single text, you must make sure that you, whoever that are applying, has profit and loss somewhere in your resume. So that it picks up those buzz, buzzwords. All right, so um, also in the application process, you know, there are a lot of fields where it says it's optional, but, you know, something I have seen common is that cover letter, you know, when there's an application that says, do you have a cover letter on top of your resume? Should we fill that out? Is it needed? What does it do? Does it give us another step in the door or puts us, you yeah. know, just a little bit, a few points up ahead? Yes, definitely. No, definitely. It is it is handy to have one when submitting applications. If you don't have one today, um, after this webinar, sit down and, and put one together. Um, you can edit it every time to make it job specific. So it's not generic because then it'll defeat the purpose of, of standing out. Um, include those details of, of the accomplishments that you have or information about those employment gaps or any career, or if you're making a career change, you know, describe um, your motivations, your passion so that um, that document can speak for you. So, so definitely have it handy. Yeah, I think the yeah, cover letter yeah. really does enhances the, um, your job application. So an application or resume nowadays might not be, um, you know, the only thing that gets you into the door. You wanna make sure that you're able to compel your case. So you're, you're kind of setting your case of why you should be hired for that position and for especially for executive type level um, positions. So um, if you, for example, need to relocate, if you're looking something in, in Texas or something like that, then you can say that in your cover letter. You know, sometimes you don't get the opportunity to say those things in a resume, um, unless you put like available to, you know, for relocation. But if you wanna be like, oh, you know, hire manager, I send you this, this is my cover letter. Um, I'm, I'll be available from February 12th to the 20th. Um, I'll be in Las Vegas, I'll be in Austin, Texas. Um, so that's what they do. Um, one of my tips on this one um, is to, when you do get an, um, my favorite thing is to look for jobs on LinkedIn. So if I know who the hiring manager is, which it says in the job description, shoot them an email, a message. Hey, I'm interested in your job, you know, um, and get yourself out there. That little thing, that little paragraph can be also transmitted to your cover letter or from your cover letter, which is sales, says who you are, what do you want and how available you are. So definitely um, cover letters to me are always handy to have it in your pocket for sure. Yeah, great tip. And, you know, just putting that message puts you on the radar. You know, because that recruiter or that hiring manager can be looking at a hundred applicants, but that little message can really, you know, make that great first impression. Yeah, old school personality used to say like send emails, mail, mm -hmm. thank yous to actual yeah. job uh, recruiters. So I mean, we have to get virtual now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, um, aside from the optional questions, uh, what about the questions that are open ended? You know, this is a common one, salary expectations. You know, a lot of us are, you know, when we're applying for that job, we get into this field of saying, what is your desired salary? What do we put? Is there an amount 
that or like a, a mathematical type of formula? Your advice. Um, to get very technical, I will say yes. Google it. Google the uh, try to find the medium on the for do some market research under the job title, and then it will tell you how much um, I don't know a front desk manager makes on Las Vegas or how much a for a beverage manager should make on Vegas. Um, so definitely that's a way a good indicator. But to be more human, that's actually a very personal question because I will never if. If the medium is 45K a year, and I know that to live a comfortable and happy life, I need at least 50K, then that's something that I'm going to bring to my employer, right? I'll be like, hey, um, I, I love the company. I love the culture. I'm really buying into this. But I do have to disclose that I the minimum I'm accepting is 50K. Of course, if you can bring me more, or if they even give you the job, and then like, hey, Anthony, here's a 48K. Um, you can be like, hey, I'll take the job if you give me to 55 or 50. So don't be afraid to say those things because at the end of the night, compensation is one of the biggest um, issues uh, when it's turn, or, turn around or turnover, sorry, for um, employees. So definitely just have to feel comfortable and not make it awkward when you're talking to somebody. It's just a mm -hmm. conversation, you know, and it's part of what the things that you need to. So definitely to sit down with your family and crack those numbers to make sure that you have a realistic mm -hmm. expectations as well. Yes, absolutely. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Now we're running a little tight on time, so I'm going to skip over this, but I know you guys want to show this, the, the spotlighter. So these are like the top 10 qualities uh, of a great hospitality employee. Um, you know, Gigi and Rose, care to comment, what, what is uh, the spotlighter and how does that uh, resemble that? Yes, so um, one of the uh, questions uh, Anthony had for us was top 10 qualities. And my company has come with this brilliant um, anagram with a spotlighter. So um, I feel that, of course, to smile and be friendly, be welcome and be positive, you know, like be playful. I think it transmits from your smile, you know, be personalized, have your own brand, have your own trend, um, have something going on for you that will make you outstand from the rest. Own it, you know, take responsibility, but also say it. Say how you own it. Say have you been responsible of the task that you that you've been provided by previous employers. Um, be thorough, you know. Um, always follow up, close the loop, provide examples, listen, you know. Be attentive listener. Be um in practice. Practice how to be a listener. You know, I practice every day at home. Sometimes my boyfriend drives me insane, and I have to sit down and listen. And those are the things that I bring to my you know, to my day to day, especially dealing with car customers. Um, yeah. The, yeah, no, and this is an anagram. I'll continue it, um, Gigi. Uh, yeah. It's an anagram that's close to us. We literally carry it next to us um, in the little pocket, the car, just to keep reminding ourselves that this is why we're here, uh, to be in the moment, to be present and focused, uh, to practice genuine, authentic empathy. Uh, to be honest, which to me to us means realistic and communicating that um, timely, respecting other people's time and acting urgently. And expert uh, of your community, of the business trends that requires research and speaking up when you need additional training or resources so that you can be ready, uh, prepared to anticipate the needs of the support departments of the guests. Of course. And I think a great tip is if we can show any of these qualities that are mentioned in the spotlight into our resume, you know, that would pretty much get us pretty far ahead in the hiring process. Yeah, those are great buzzwords as well. Yeah. I just want, we just wanted to summarize it and, and to give it to you. But to me, is bringing um, the best quality is to bring your eat factor. Who you are as a person, what's your brand, what do you want to do? how you want to do it, how you've accomplished. Having been prepared for that is what's going to get you to the next, to the job. Of course. So now we're going to go move a little fast forward to the Q&A portion. We did reserve 10 minutes from the audience to ask any questions. Um, we do have a few. So I'll begin with um, Elizabeth 
question. So what questions to stay away from asking a recruiter? Is there any question that's off limits or, you know, just be open and honest? Um, this is for you, Gigi. Um, I don't think there's any, um, well, back up. I feel that if you already know your question is going to be some sort of a delicate question, then you should be able to phrase it um, on a way that won't come awkward and it won't come that way. Um, my best suggestion is for you to practice your question, either write it down and ask your question to somebody else to make sure it's not offensive, to make sure um, it's, it's gonna give you the answer that you're looking for, right? If it's compensation, um, find a way like to say, it, or if you need, um, if you don't have a flexible schedule, but you really want the job, right? Find a way for you to ask that question in practice. I don't think there is any question that can't be asked. It's just the way that you're gonna ask them. Of course, you have to be, you know, very careful of crossing anything that might be inappropriate. Absolutely. Definitely. And yeah, don't be shy. Like she says, um, I think keep it relevant would be uh, you know, helpful. To, and, and if you think it's delicate, then maybe don't, don't ask it. Yeah. All right. And then another question from Elizabeth. Um, is a salary to be discussed before or after the hiring process? Or when is it exactly the best time to discuss your salary expectations? I think um, it just really depends on how comfortable you are. And I like to tell my candidates, but that's just me as a recruiter, um, my salary expectations right away. You know, I tell them it's gonna be uh, 45 to 50K only type of position. So I'm sorry if you can't, you know, come to this, um, to close the gap on that, but basically, the, the the right time is honestly once you you want the job once you want the job once you are like okay i've learned from the company i talked to my first recruiter i talked to my second job hire uh, hiring manager whenever you feel that you want the job it's when you should be putting those uh questions in place absolutely don't waste your time and don't waste um the recruiter's time Wonderful. Thank you. For yeah, that. I, I would agree with that. I don't oh. undersell yourself because we typically have a, sorry, I was going to say, we typically have a range no, that, ahead, we can, that we can negotiate with during the interview. So I would bring it up as soon as possible. If you're ready to, to um, sell why you deserve that amount, bring it up and, and discuss it with the hiring manager. Yeah, absolutely. Now, while we wait for like more questions to fill in, if we have any, um, and if you guys are anyone in the audience that is running out of time, please, of course, go ahead and connect with both Gigi or Jose on LinkedIn. Um, just type in their name, um, go on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, sign one up, do it right now, connect with them, and then they'll be happy to, you know, you can drop them a message, connect with them, they'd be happy to answer any questions on there, and these are their LinkedIn profiles. Um, also, we want to leave off with, you know, thank you to the Soleil management team, uh, Gigi and Jose. Um, you too, uh, both of you do have opportunities that are available. Um, so please make sure that you visit soleilmanagement-careers for any current openings. Um, Gigi, Jose, do you want to share what type of openings that you have right now, um, just so that we have a little teaser? Yeah. We have, yeah, we have a dire need for lifeguards right now. <laughs> Um, we're trying to ramp up for our, our pool opening. So that's currently our focus, but uh, we're always looking for, for talent, especially in the next coming weeks. Um, I don't know if Gigi has anything specific that she'd like to mention. Yeah, so um, Solar Management is a huge organization. So we do have anything from, we're right now looking for, um, of course, line associates like the lifeguards um, will be probably opening from this. We have a lot of housekeeping openings as well. Um, but we have like human resources specialists uh, open up. We have a uh, training and development specialist um, open up. We have our accounting team posting them as well. So we are, uh, we're really lucky as an organization, Anthony, um, that we are expanding and that we are able to uh, retain our talent as much as now acquiring new. So definitely I ask you if you're interested, 
um, go ahead and type soleilmanagement.com stash careers um, and look for your next dream job. Of course, if you um, send me an IM on LinkedIn, again, I'm Gigi Luhan, and you can always, you know, ask me anything about the recruiting, any questions, um, I'll be more than happy to help you. And if you are interested in one of our careers, you know, I'll be your personal recruiter for that. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it at all. All right, so once again, we wanna thank Gigi and Jose for your time from Soli Management. Um, if anyone in our audience that have missed a recording or uh, missed, not recording, but missed a portion of this webinar, this will be available on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to us at CISO channel. We'll also post these links on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and all of our many other social media channels. Again, thank you, Gigi and Jose, and thank you to our audience. Uh, stay tuned for any uh, upcoming webinars that we have uh, down the line in these coming weeks.